Hello everyone and welcome back to the mystery theory. Today I am going to share another true crime story. This is a solved case but instead of just sharing it as always sitting in front of the camera I am going back just to the audio because I been struggling with a few health issues and really this was the only way possible to get the videos done and the cases shared. So I figured this is better than not sharing the videos for the next um, few days. So I hope that you still join me. Uh, today's story it's a little bit different of what I've been sharing because it's a solved case. But then on top of that, it's also one of those stories that I don't know, some people qualify as senseless because it's more, uh, I don't know, money oriented, unfaithfulness, a series of things that led to the ending of this case that involves a young family. So it actually, I'm going to start with the end and then I'll develop the story. I usually like to start with the background, but for this case, it actually makes sense to start from what really happened that night. Now, this case takes place in Edgewood, Kentucky, and on July 12th, so it was the summer night of the year 2000, around 8.32 p.m., there was still sunlight and Again, it was the summertime, and a stay-at-home mother from the neighborhood, Adele Craven, she is running um, to a neighbor's house. She knocks desperately on the door. Nobody was outside. So when they open the door, she tells the neighbor that there is a burglary going on at her house and that she needed their phone so she could call 911. Now, she told the, the operator or dispatcher that she arrived at her home and saw that her front door was wide open and that she got very scared. Her husband is out of town and no one else has access to a key or pretty much nobody else has access to the house. This happened to me once. I remember I went to work, I came back at 5 in the afternoon, and this was many years ago, but my garage door was open. I, th 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 that's very scary, so I can totally understand how she called 911, but in my case, it was scary, but <laughs> I still walked inside. I thought that somebody maybe opened the garage, took something, and left. But the garage was untouched. So it was kind of interesting to know that I forgot to close my garage door that morning when I left to go to work. So <laughs> uh, definitely something that gets your heart pumping. So I totally understand, and you know, the idea that you run to go get help, at least from a neighbor. Um, she told this Padger that when she got to the house she saw that the door was open and she also saw a light on so she was afraid that whoever opened the house uh, and you know was probably still inside um, a few minutes later a police officer a lady officer get to got to the house and she find the neighbor waiting in the home's driveway, which by the way, it sounds very dangerous because if you think that somebody is inside the house, sitting in the driveway, kind of guarding the house and making sure nobody leaves, it's not the best. But when the police asked the neighbor, um, he said that he looked inside the house and that he, was, he could see blood all over the basement. Now, this is a completely different story of what this badger told this officer. So she immediately calls for a backup. And even though that this was a dangerous situation, uh, or more dangerous than what it was reported, she still goes in and checks the basement. 
um, when she goes downstairs, she finds Adele's husband, Stephen Craven, who is only 38 years old, and he was sadly found dead. The body was cold. He apparently was, according to the officer description, he was overkilled. And later on, the, the forensic reports would come back and report the same thing. Now, why overkilled? Well, this guy was shot in the head several times. Actually, three times. And on top of um, that, he was beaten to death with something. He, I mean, one of his arms looked broken. Um, so it was, it was pretty brutal. Now, going back outside where Adele was in the entire neighborhood at this point, I mean, everybody was out and waiting for the officer to get out and inform them what, what happened. But the officer talks to Adele and tells her that her husband has been killed. Now, they do not give you details of what happened or how it happened. Um, I am sure that they told her, you know, maybe he was shot or something, but they do not give you many details on how it happened or this is an active investigation, of course. So even though Adele was the wife, she just knew that he was dead. Now, everyone was shocked. This is a young woman. Um, she's actually now a widow. Uh, she has two kids and she was devastated. She she started crying and a normal, quote-unquote, normal reaction for somebody who is going through what she was going through. And she initially thought there was just a burglary and that her husband was out of town. Now, the police... They still need to question her because she was the one that reported it. So it was important that they get her statement right away, even though they knew it was going to be hard for her to kind of go through everything that happened that night. She still did give a statement where she reported that she got home at 8.30, that she was shopping all day and... She tells the police that the last time that she saw her husband was at 11 a.m. that day. That they were having breakfast, um, they kissed goodbye, and that her husband was going to fly to New York for a Broadway show to watch it with a friend. Now, as soon as the investigation started, they needed to know the relationship between Adele and her husband. It is something that happens in every investigation. It makes sense. And even though you want to believe what the wife or the husband, whatever the case may be, is saying about their marriage, they, they still need to do their due diligence. So they found out that they've been married for 11 years and that they met in California. Stephen at the time was a jet pilot for the Coast Guard and they fell in love. Um, they met, they fell in love immediately. It was pretty fast, everything. Um, they got married, they had their first son and at that point they wanted to settle down. So he accepted a position as a commercial, commercial airline pilot, but they needed to move to Kentucky in order to accept the job. So they were in California and they moved as a family to Kentucky. When they got there, um, Adele got pregnant again and they had another son. Everyone seemed to think that they were a really happy couple. He was a loving father, a good father too, a good reliable employee, and overall a good guy as described as most of their neighbors and friends, family members. So if he wasn't really involved in any kind of trouble or if he didn't have any kind of, of um, enemies, who would want to harm him? He had no enemies, so who would want to do that? 
this didn't seem like something random. This seemed like he was the target. But having the idea of a burglary gone wrong really didn't add up. The evidence point to another direction. Um, they could tell that there was no forced entry, nothing missing. They continued to gather physical evidence in the house including blood samples, and they look for prints. The only thing that they could see that pointed to maybe a burglary was the fact that there was an open file cabinet and two desk drawers that were dumped in the floor, but the rest of the house was untouched. So, it almost seemed like whoever did it never got to the main floor. Everything happened in the basement. Now, they believe that all these desk drawers and the open file cabinet, it was kind of a setup. It was trying to make the people, the police believe that this was a burglary. The autopsy confirmed that he was struck with a heavy a blunt object that fractured his skull initially, but that didn't kill him. So he was beaten and then shot three times in the head with a caliber 38. At that point, the people in the area were devastated not only to know that something this horrible could happen in the neighborhood, but also that a really good guy was killed for what they just couldn't believe. I mean, it, there was no reason for doing this to this guy. So they uh, got together a thousand dollars as a reward for information leading to the arrest, which I don't think is that much, but at least it was something. Family members, friends, neighbors, they were all questions by questioned by the police. But they all would keep saying the same thing. They seem like the perfectly happy couple, even though we do know that there is not, not such thing. The police continued to dig deeper and found that they were fighting a lot recently and that they visited a counselor, that they spending, they, that apparently, according to what they found, I, I am not sure if it was from the counselor, but the issue was that she was spending too much money and she was putting all that uh, spending in credit cards that, according to her husband, they couldn't pay. And she was complaining that he wanted too much sex. So that was the main complaints of why they were visiting the counselor. Now, she also said that she was pretty bored because Stephen had frequent long trips. And I didn't know this, but... I mean, being a pilot, it's a very um, kind of interesting job. Sometimes they have four days and they'd be flying to different places during that time. I mean, I understand that she was lonely and bored, but that was another thing that she told the counselor, or at least that it was reported by the police. So since she was so bored, she decided to finish her basement. And they hired uh, Rusty McIntyre to do it. He was a 32-year-old man. Um, He was a very nice guy. He had good references. He would stay really long days, stay late to finish the job. He wouldn't charge overtime. I mean, this guy was a... (laughs) one of those contractors that really stood out. So he's on call anytime. I mean, this guy really wanted this job. But later we would find out that maybe all that overtime and uh, I don't know, not charging for the overtime had more to do that he had a relationship with Adele. Uh, We know that because a month before the death of Stephen, the police caught Adele and Rusty having uh, 
intimacy they were being intimate they were having sex in their church parking lot so in adele's church parking lot yeah so apparently this was a lust case which is very very common and it's something that definitely is seen over and over in different courthouses i mean this is the kind of trial that it's very very common in for a lot of people it really doesn't make sense if you're unhappy with your marriage just get over it get a divorce move on with your life but you know this rusty guy he was a married guy too he said that he was very unhappy and that they would have that bond you know and they would bitch about each other husband or wife so that bonded them and i mean adele had a husband who loved her and she also had an on-call handsome lover so it was almost like she had what she wanted but the police had to find out if they wanted Stephen out of the way. Uh, one of Adele's friends told the police that while they were having a conversation and Adele was complaining about her husband, she said that she wished her husband's uh, plane would crash so she could give the $500,000 insurance policy. She said that they were joking about it, but she mentioned that to the police. So now the police know that he was worth more dead than alive. Another thing that the police had to keep in mind is that when they interviewed the babysitter of the uh, couple, she said that once Adele told her that if something happened to Stephen, don't ask me about it. I don't want to lie to you. She also told her mom that she wanted a divorce, but she needed $3,000 for the legal cost. But she never filed for a divorce or even mentioned it. She kept the money and moved on. And now, the police at this point had more than enough to be suspicious about Adele and her intentions with her husband. They questioned her again, and she tells pretty much the same story. But at the end, she adds a little detail that she didn't or she couldn't have known unless she was involved. When she went into the details, she mentioned that he was shot three times. But how did she know if the police never released that information? Now, on July 21st of the year 2000, the police had more than enough evidence to arrest Adele Craven and charge her with murder. But they suspected that she had help. So they decided to bring her lover, Rusty, for questioning. He said that he started to work for them two months ago and that the relationship with Adele turned physical immediately. It didn't actually take them that long. Every few days, they would meet for sex and plan for their future. It was something that they liked to do. They wanted to plan the way or a way that they could be together, but uh, kind of in a dreamy way. At that same time, he admits to participate in the murder, but he said that he didn't pull the trigger. He said that Adele was the one who wanted to kill her husband, so he decided to contact her with a hitman to take care of it. His name was Ronald Pryor. Now, this guy, Ronald, he, described by Rusty, he wasn't a very bright man. He didn't ask questions. And they promised him $15,000 if he could get the job done. They study everything and they actually set up a date on July 12th. So, Rusty, the handyman slash contractor slash Adele's lover plus the hitman waited for the call. She said that he was living on a trip and that the time to act was now. 
Now she goes, or she went that day, actually, I'm not sure if that was before calling or after, and she got a thousand dollars cash advance in a credit card. She also, that day, when she called, she left the back door unlocked for the hitman. Now, <laughs> Rusty and the hitman park in the back of the house. And the hitman, Ronald, uh, leaves the truck with a crowbar. Adele, at that time, she knows that he is in the basement. So she lures her husband to the basement because, of course, she wanted to uh, meet the hitman that they hired. She told her husband that the ferret was loose and he went downstairs to check on it, on their pet. At the time that he gets down there, she locks the door and the hitman strikes. He beats Stephen brutally, uh, but not enough to kill him. Uh, she is looking at this scene and she has a loaded gun. So she decides to end it. I am not sure if she handed. I am. I am almost sure that she handed the gun to Ronald, the hitman. But it. I mean, it's not very, very clear. Regardless of that, uh, outside, Rusty decided to put the music really loud so nobody could hear the shots. It was a, a very calculated plan. Maybe not the smartest, but very, very cal calculated. Now, the police had to find this guy, Ronald Pryor. And they both got convicted for murder. Rusty, the handyman slash contractor slash lover, and the hitman. Ronald Pryor. Now, again, they get convicted for murder, but her trial ends in hung jury. The defense claims that she was a victim in all this, that she ended the relationship with Rusty prior to his murder or to her husband's murder, and that Rusty got jealous and decided to get rid of the husband to be with her. Now, the prosecution said that she was the mastermind and the DA took the, the death penalty off the table for Rusty and Ronald for their testimony against Adele. So this was a strategic move by the DA's office to try to get them to confess uh, and testify against each other. Adele, prior to the trial, after all the pressure and knowing that she was going to lose this, she decided to confess in her role in her husband's murder. She pled guilty to complicity to commit murder, and she was sent into life, but will be eligible for parole after 20 years. Rusty, the lover slash contractor slash handyman, was um, got 25 years to life, and Ronald Pryor got life without parole. He, his killing was cruel, and just knowing that in the last minutes of Stephen's life, he knew that his wife was behind this horrific beating and basically trying to kill him he was a good man he had a good marriage but he didn't see it coming and the jury realized that the cruelty behind Adele and and her lover, it was just too much. It was cruel, it was painful, and it was unnecessary as every single case 
for every single true crime case that I share with you guys. But knowing that everything that they wanted was the money because they could have run together and leave her husband and leave her kids or take her kids with her and, you know, do something illegal in another way. However, she decided to, that she needed the money, that she wanted the money, that she deserved the money from a guy that really did nothing wrong but maybe make her unhappy. And that's why there's divorce and that's why there's different ways to deal with that. But for her, those things were not an option. She wanted to keep her lifestyle and at the same time get a little bit more from somebody else. Now the end of the story is really sad. Now we have a couple of orphan boys that all of a sudden are left with nothing. Their mom is in jail, the dad is dead, and just knowing the circumstances of everything that happened for this couple, it just really makes you, I don't know, it makes you wonder if this is something that they should know. I, I have no idea of how, you know, the people that knew this couple, the families, your parents must feel like after finding out all this. And I think it kind of speaks to my heart and the power of people getting money hungry and trying to fulfill something that they have empty inside of them with money and things and buying and the feeling of fulfillment that that will give you for a few seconds, not realizing that it will give you a headache if you can't afford to keep that lifestyle. As always, this was something that could have been avoided, that shouldn't have happened, that it's just, just to think about that money was the reason behind it, it makes me hate money even more. And I... I am not very ambitious. I am not... I just want to have enough. But... You know, it just... leads me back to my original theory that money... It really is nothing but something that us humans gave some kind of a value. And then all of a sudden, people started to forget about the real values and put them in something that really is nothing but paper. I mean, do we really need it to be that happy? Did she really need it, that money to be happy? I mean such a horrible tragedy such a horrible way to die for Stephen uh, and I'm sure that Stephen had more than one thing that Adele didn't enjoy and I'm sure that the guy had things that you know he had to work in or through but really I mean just think about it for one second what can be so bad in your partner that you feel the need to do this there's no logical explanation but pure I don't know I really can't put words into what I'm thinking right now in this case and I am not judging Adele for what she did I think that she was judge already and you know she's paying for what she did but I wish that we, we can all see that this will never be a way out of a relationship that 
the sad part is that if she didn't slip and told that to the police about the three uh, shots or, you know, that maybe they didn't, they wouldn't have had enough evidence to convict her. Was this the almost perfect crime? Were they going to get away with it if she didn't open her big mouth? That again, kind of shows you that these are not big time criminals. They're just people desperate, desperate to fill a hole that they have in their lives and they're not sure how. And resort to this kind of unthinkable thing to get it. To fulfill something. Just a sad, sad story. And a horrible ending for a couple of boys that don't deserve to be in this situation. So, as always, I hope you understand that we can always do better. And that we can always change ourselves but we can't change other people so we should focus on that and if something is not working out it's not worth staying if something it's really that bad if if you're really that unhappy if you need to find somebody else that makes you happy maybe that's the sign that it's time to let go let go and try something different If you're not happy, if you're feeling empty, if you're feeling like there is nothing else for you and you find something that does make you feel better, that does make you feel like you need it, you you can stay alive, you have a purpose again, you have something to live for. Anyways... Even though this was a solved case, it also leaves me with that kind of sad, empty feeling. But um, not an uncommon one. I think I've shared my quite a few of these cases already. That I wish that they would never happen again. Thank you so much for being on the other side as always. And I will see you back on Friday with a new true crime whispered video. Bye guys.